Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the card that I made for the latest There's a Stamp for That Challenge. I hope you'll stick around, find out what the new challenge is and see what I make. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notification. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Like I mentioned in the intro, the card that I'm going to be making today is for the latest There's a Stamp for That Challenge. This is a challenge group on Facebook that my friend Danny started, and every two weeks she comes with a fun challenge that any type of crafter can join. We have people who make cards, we have people who make journal pages, we even have some who make t-shirts using the themes given. You always have a choice between two challenges, and this latest challenge is Ladybugs or Red, White, and Black. If after you're done watching my video, you want to go check out the challenge group on Facebook, I will have it linked in the description box below. I have decided that for my card, I'm going to meet the Red, White, and Black challenge. In front of me are most of the products that I'll be using. If I add anything later, I will let you know. But once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my stamp set today, I'm going to use this set from Gina K Designs. It's called The Best Flowers and it is from their Nature's Touch card kit. Now this is originally something you could only get as part of the kit, but I believe that once their new kit comes out, which might be here in August, that they will sell this set individually. I will be doing some die cutting with the Hero Arts Infinity Dies Rectangle. For my stamping, I got out VersaFine Onyx Black and VersaMark. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to use the VersaFine or if I'll heat emboss, but speaking of heat embossing, I also got out my Recollections Black Detail Embossing Powder and White Detail Embossing Powder. For my papers, I got out a white top fold card base. And then I got out some scraps of white, black, and red to go with the theme. Let's get crafty! I started off today's card by cutting half inch strips from the red and black cardstock. You'll notice here that I just push from right to left and I use the half inch mark to the left of where my cut line is. I end up cutting three from each colored cardstock. I wasn't really sure now how many I would end up using, but this did end up being enough. Once the strips were cut, I got out my scrap of white cardstock and cut that so it was four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall. This will end up being what I do my stamping on. This next piece of paper is just a standard piece of printer paper, and this will be the base later for those strips of cardstock. I cut this so it was two and a half inches tall and then about five and a half inches wide, but I will end up cutting this down later. I wasn't sure at this point what color order I wanted these strips to go in, so I placed five on my piece of paper and I kind of alternated between having black on the outsides and red on the outsides, and I did end up going with black on the outside edges, so I added adhesive to the back of five of these strips and placed them down on that piece of typing paper. To ensure that all of my papers would match up after cutting down, I did use my Hero Arts Infinity dies to die cut these two pieces. I used the fourth from the largest size, and I started by just cutting out from that white cardstock. I'm not really sure earlier why I worried about what size I cut it to because I'm cutting it even smaller. But once I had cut the white cardstock to size, I then placed my die onto the cardstock strip piece and cut that to the same width as the white cardstock. Now you'll notice here that I reused my piece of scotch blue removable tape. This was just a scrap I had to the right of me and I love how it's reusable for so many times. 
At this point, I started to kind of play around with where I wanted the striped paper to go and what stamp I was going to use. And that's when I decided that that was probably too big of a striped strip for the front of my card. So I pulled out my Fiskars photo trimmer and I trimmed off the bottom two strips. So now I have two black strips and a red in the center. Because I will be stamping the flower twice, but I need the placement to be exact, I did pull out my Misty. I'm going to be stamping first the floral image in the VersaFine Onyx Black onto the white cardstock background. I play around a little bit with the orientation and the placement of all of my stamps, making sure that the whole sentiment will fit with the striped cardstock piece. Once I have those in place where I think they'll work, I go ahead and pick up the first two stamps with the door of my Misty, and I go ahead and get those inked up and stamped onto the white cardstock. Now because I hadn't used these stamps before, you do see there that I just kind of ran my hand over them to get rid of those oils from production. Next, I work on the placement of my cardstock strip piece. I want to make sure that when I stamp the word birthday on that top black strip, that it's in a good position underneath the word happy. Now you'll see I used a little scrap of washi tape there to hold that onto the white cardstock. And just so I don't stamp anything extra onto the image that's already there, I get out a couple post-it notes and place that over the top. You'll see there I did run my embossing buddy over the cardstock stripped piece. Because I will be heat embossing these, this ensures that my powder only sticks to where I want it. I did stamp in VersaFine so it's a little hard to see, but once I pour the white powder over that, you'll see where my image ended up. Now the reason I needed to stamp on this and heat emboss with white is because if I would have stamped with that black again, you're not going to see the ink on the black strips of cardstock. I just really like this effect, how the stamp flows from top to bottom, and it just gives it a little bit of a different look. Once the flower image was all stamped, I placed my card in the lower right of my Misty just so I could make sure to align that in the corner. Now I got a tip from Kathy Zilski. I know that you keep hearing her name lately on my videos, but you know how sometimes those little bitty stamps want to stick to your fingers and move around? She taps her fingers onto her embossing buddy to kind of de-stick her fingers so when she lets go of the sentiment stamp, the stamp stays where you want it. So again, I just stamped that with the Versamark and then I heat embossed it again with that white detail embossing powder. Once both of those pieces were stamped, I added adhesive to the back of the red and black strip and I got that placed on the card front where the image lined up from top to bottom. Now because I wanted this to stand out a little bit from the card front, I got back out my Hero Arts Infinity dies and using the third from the largest, I cut a frame from a scrap of red card stock. Now that all of the pieces were ready, I started to assemble my card. The first thing I did was mat the floral piece with that red cardstock mat, and then I'm going to place this onto my card front with a sheet of fun foam. This is just kids craft foam, and it works great for this and is pretty economical. I trimmed it down so it was slightly smaller than my red piece of cardstock, and then I got out my art glitter glue and adhered it to the front of the card. Now I have mentioned it before, but that little stopper that I keep in the top of my art glitter glue was one of the best purchases I have ever made. That has kept me from losing the pin for this glue bottle numerous times. If you're interested in checking that out, I will link the fellow YouTubers video below who I bought it from. To make sure everything adhered okay, I did leave this card under some clear stamp blocks for about five minutes. And then it was time to finish it with some bling. I got out some red gems from my stash and I placed five on the card front. Normally I do three gems, but because there was a lot of open area at the bottom where I thought I would need three gems alone, I did five from the top left to the bottom right just for a little bit of flow. And here's a close up look at the finished card. I 
I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's challenge card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget if you want to go check out the Facebook challenge group, it's linked below. But until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.